And welcome back to Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And we're back. We are back. Oh, can you believe it, Tony? Uh, no. I can barely contain <laughs> myself. So, uh, uh, I mean, do we want to talk about why it's taken so long for us to get back? Oh, well, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. The crunch time that we've had at my work is uh, finally wrapped up. Uh, you've shipped one. Yes. Yeah, Skylanders Giants is out. And, uh, and now, here we are. Doing... Uh, Doing, doing this, episodes. The Starship Phoenix episode. Was That's this, right. Was this one of your levels, Tony? Uh, I believe this was Jared's level. All right. Uh, I want to say that. That's, it, what it, that's it, what it feels like in my heart. It might have been Ken's. Oh, it might have been Ken's yeah. as well. Because I think he did miscellaneous stuff and, the, like, miscellaneous levels and the... Uh, uh, it's hard to know. Yeah. Jared did the regular uh, Phoenix, right? Uh, well, Moose said he did a lot of it, too. So, I mean, everybody was tag-teaming stuff at this point, I think. Uh, this was one of the last levels I think we did. But these are definitely your ninjas. These are definitely my ninjas. They sure look like my ninjas. It doesn't look like too much has changed on them. So, uh, one, of the, one of the issues we were running into last time uh, was we, we were running out of things to talk about. People keep giving us ideas for things to talk about, but then I keep losing the list of things that we yeah. have to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so we end up not talking about them. Can you remember? No. Because I've lost the list. You, you the never things. read me the list. You you have a list, <laughs> and then every time we do an episode, you're like, let me look through the list. And then, oh, I don't have the list. So, I know so I've never seen the list, so I have no idea what would be on the list. I know one of the things on the list is uh, New Game Plus. Uh, and we're probably not going to do a New Game Plus playthrough of the game. Probably right? not. Uh, uh, I find that hard to believe. So it seems fair for us to talk about it now, maybe. Uh, that's cool. Oh, that guy is not in a happy place, that guy. Oh. He's in a very sad place. Is he, is he thinking he's on a gravity uh, surface? Is that what that is? Uh, I don't know what's going on there. That, oh, that guy's stuck too. Look at that. This is a bad, bad, bad zone. All three of them are in there. <laughs> They're all falling into the ground. Something's up with the collision here. I think this thing is a Moby right here. It's possible. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Something's really bad with that collision. Well, let's bring him back and see if we can do it again. Maybe we can figure out what's causing it. I think those guys were dropping from the ceiling or something, and I fear oh. that might have had something to do with it. Alright, I'll try to keep them from dying too much. That's a weird area, i got to say. Um, New Game Plus. Uh, I think we mentioned it very briefly when we were talking before about how we uh, really, really, really love the New Game Plus that we, that we ended up doing in this game. That, that star has two trails. Oh, I think that's the same problem as with, we were talking about on the, the episode that never was, right? Similar, yeah. Uh, for some reason, some of these effects got doubled up. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, I don't remember, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't in on the design meetings where the New Game Plus was brought up. Uh, so, do you remember how it came across that, you know, we were going to do the giant bolt multipliers on the kill streaks and all that kind of stuff that was in there? Well, the way that uh, New Game, like the replay stuff always worked in design was uh, at the very last minute. So it would be like, okay, everyone, we're approaching beta. Time to do all the replay stuff. Yeah. All right. So, Mike, your job is to come up with the gold bolt location. Sean, your job is New Game Plus, uh, you know, Corey, right, and so forth, right? So we would all uh, sort of contribute our designs to the overall replay plan. And then, you know, do do whatever we could with the limited resources we had after beta to right. actually make these things. Um, I think the idea to do the uh, bolt multiplier was Sean Whistler's. Okay. Uh, and it's probably one of the best ideas in the franchise's history. I really like the idea. Uh, uh, what is it that you like so much about well, the idea? Well, so here was the thing that always got me. I, th I I'm, Correct me if I'm wrong, but we did not do it in Ratchet 1. It, the bolt multiplier stuff was not there in Ratchet 1, no. at the very least. Um, we did New Game Plus, but we didn't have uh, bolt multiplier. And what ended up happening was, basically, we always intended that the Rhino was a weapon that you got in your second playthrough. We never really expected you to get the Rhino the first time you were going through the game. 
because it costs such a ridiculous amount of money. Right. The Rhino is a replay weapon. Right. And um, same with the Zodiac and all that. Right. But the thing is, like, we didn't actually do anything in the replay to help you get the Rhino. You just kind of started playing the game a lot and started farming bolts. Yeah. And what ended up happening was people found locations where you could cheese out, you know, where you could use the taunter on the racetrack to get a bunch of bolts. And, like, there wasn't any real any real incentive on how to grind bolts in the replay besides just playing the game over and over and over and over again. Or maybe doing arena challenges or whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, and so what I liked about the... Uh, what I liked about the new the new game plus we have is that when you go and do the replay like there's actually a mechanic in there that helps you get all those weapons that you missed the first time through which is really nice because i mean the main reason people are playing through the new game plus is to get those weapons and stuff that they missed the first time through and to see what they do and so it really is good of us to allow you to uh you know actually help you along that path to get you there and get those weapons. Yeah, I mean, in, in Ratchet 1, we had minor segments, and we tried to do a lot of stuff to, uh, you know, to make the, the replay sort of less grindy. But even so, it never had the same feeling of reward and sort of joy that the newer games have, like, especially with the bolt multiplier. Right. Well, I mean, and there's a skill to the bolt multiplier in that as you get better at the game you get better at farming bolts, right? There's that. You can see a progression in yourself in the way that you play the game. And it takes... It's in the bolt multiplier. And it makes it so that the second time you play through, you have different goals. You're trying different things. Right. Which is also a good, you know, thing to add to the, the replay. So, yeah, I agree. I think the... Uh, I think the bolt multiplier was one of the best things to happen to our replay. You didn't put the refractor beam in there, Mike. No, I didn't. You should have put the refractor beam in there, Mike. <laughs> Oh, let me turn it up again. So, uh, so let's see. So we, we, we had the new game plus mode, and that was important. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, I think the reason that we didn't, uh, we didn't do the bolt multiplier in the first couple games was back then there was a huge amount of buzz associated with having a minimum number of hours of gameplay. Yeah, that was a lot more important, at least to to publishers back then, than it was, than it is nowadays. Uh, nowadays, you know, you could make an eight-hour-long game, and people will complain, but it's not the kiss of death. Back then, if you didn't have a twenty to forty-hour experience, people would call you on it. You know, right? Uh, so I remember there being like specific discussions in the first two game about how can we how can we extend the length of the game? How can we how can we give them more to do so that we can have that box point? Right. Uh, and I think by the time Ratchet 3 came around, we were less interested in how long it took you to do it and more interested in how much fun you were having doing it. Right. And I just died. Oh, and you got to start all the way back from the beginning. Oh. Well, yeah. that's good because we haven't stopped talking about New Game Plus yet. you got to be better with that ammo. Ammo management is, is a problem for you. Yeah. Uh... Let's see. So, New Game Plus is one of them. Uh, that's a good one. People always wanted us to talk about the music, but we've done that already. Well, I mean, uh, just a, a quick thing about New Game Plus is that... And this is something that I haven't seen elsewhere so much, but Insomniac really did care about having something after the end of the game like we didn't want the end of the game to be the end of the game like we they never really wanted that they've always oh, no. intended to have you go through the game two or three times everything to see from everything skill, that you wanted yeah everything from skill points to uh you know the, the skins and everything right platinum bolts it was just very important yeah and this was before the xbox achievement hullabaloo that all caught fire I like to think that skill points inspired the yeah. achievement hole blue, uh, and I actually mean that one. I like to think it inspired <laughs> it. Sorry, I'm just so intent on killing these ninjas. That's yeah. You do that. Make it happen. I'm just gonna go buy ammo. It's funny because I read 
I read stuff on the internet every now and again, um, and this might maybe sound like complaining, but it's not complaining. I've, I'm just trying to explain that you read on the internet every now and again about how people are upset that, uh, you know, game unlocks aren't what they used to be and, you know, cheat codes aren't what they used to be in games anymore. Like, you know, in the olden days, when you unlocked something, whenever you completed an achievement, you would get, like, big head mode or something like that. Like, right. you know, in Ratchet, you earn your skill points and then you get a thing, you know, that you use in the game. Like, we reward you for getting skill points. And people get mad because they're like, oh, why don't people do that anymore? And, you know, that kind of stuff. But I think what people don't realize is that those things take time. To do any sort of skill, to think up skill points and implement them takes time. Yes, that's and, that's a huge amount of work. For and somebody. here's the thing: achievements and trophies in PlayStation and Xbox games are not optional. If you want to release a game on the PlayStation and the Xbox, you need to have achievements, and you need to have a certain number of them, and they have to add up to a skill to a certain number, and blah blah blah. You cannot release on the on the PlayStation or the Xbox without having achievements and skill points. Correct. And it's also part of the rules of doing achievements and uh, trophies and achievements that uh, you can't, you know, unlock big head mode through Xbox Live achievements. You, it's, it's not allowed. Xbox Live achievements are Xbox Live achievements, and they have to remain Xbox Live achievements. There's a very stringent set of rules as to, you know, how achievements have to be unlocked and what they... And, you know, what they give you and things like that. Right. If you want to publish on that platform, you have to obey the rules. Right. So, as m I, and I think a lot of developers like doing, liked doing things like big head mode and stuff like that. But the reality of the situation is, in terms of the way games work now, is that if you want to have a set of skill points that unlock cheats and things like that, you basically have to put in double the work, because not only do you have to do your own set of skill points and whatever but you also have to do the mandatory set of achievements and skill points that come by default on the platform right it has just made it that much more expensive and given the the costs of development these days like sometimes you just can't justify that right exactly and so in a perfect world if all achievements and skill points and stuff were free a lot of that stuff that was used to be in games would remain and would you know be Blair and we'd still have you know all the crazy unlocks and all the new skins and stuff that you get in modern games but the actual bare minimum of content that you need to release a game in uh in modern times is huge and all that stuff that was taken for granted and was entered in as extras for the player are no longer extras they are now mandatory and they come with a huge set of rules uh, which you know is is what it is it's it gets us some bonuses and it gets us some drawbacks. And we're not saying that the these rules are the reason that people don't do these anymore. It's just that there are it's one of the factors that have contributed to it being a lot less attractive as a developer to do them. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of other factors, but that that is one of them that sort of gets underreported a lot. Right. I mean, coming up with skill points and stuff. That's hard. I mean, that's hard stuff to do. Especially because a lot of the time you're not really coming up with that list of things until the end of the development cycle. And it's kind of like, okay, we have to find 30 things that we can do in this game that let you, you know, like, be skillful. And also, uh, you can't add any content to do it. And that, like, coming up with a list of 30 things is really hard. You're scraping the barrel by the time you get to 20. Right, exactly. So... To double that, to say, okay, well, here's the 30 things you need for the Xbox achievements. Also, come up with another 20. That's just our little special unlocks, and you're you're that's a lot of you're asking of people um, to really get that content out there. So, uh, I think the the next question that anyone would ask would be, well, why don't we plan all that from the beginning and just you know uh, plan it into the scope of the game? Well, the reality is, um, anytime you're developing a game, uh, the game you set out to make at the beginning and the game that you end up with at the end are vastly different. Yes. There's cuts, there's additions, there's changes, that all happens. No game has ever had a game design document written 
and then had that game design document just made that way. That has right. never happened. Never. So the minute you start, the the more things that you add on to the design document of this has to be there, and the less flex- flexibility you give yourself in making your game, that's just going to come back to bite you in the ass. And so the reason skill points are moved into the end is you look at the thing and you're like, okay, here's the game that we have. What can we do skill points with with the game that we have? As opposed to looking at it from the beginning and like, this is the game we're going to make because that's not the game you're going to make. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would not only would it be a waste of time and energy, but it would also not work. You'd have to do it at the end anyway. Right, exactly. Uh, so it looks like we're done with this level. Uh, that was pretty quick. Yeah. I was Except for the fact that you died. It would have been quick. Yeah. Well, I mean, all these levels would have been quick if I didn't die all the damn time. Uh, so, for developer commentary, I am Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time. Let me just get to the end of the level in case I need more footage.